beyond instructional analysis. Because it's not all about learning, it's all about performance. Your instructional systems design analysis efforts needs to help uncover what people need to learn in how to do their jobs, how to perform. They need to learn how to help themselves to better enable their own performance. They need to learn how to avoid the barriers to performance and what to do if the barriers were unavoidable. This is true at the individual level, at the team level, at the process level, at the department, function, enterprise, value chain, and the societal level. Performance competence is the ability to perform tasks to produce outputs to stakeholder requirements. My focus since 1979 has been on the process or processes. When we look at the process, we need to look at both the outputs of the process and the tasks that produce those outputs. And we need to understand the measures of that performance and the feedback necessary back into the process to improve the outputs as well as the tasks. Stakeholder requirements are central to this view and approach to performance competence development. Stakeholders are complicated. It's beyond the customer being king, which I don't believe is true. There are many stakeholders, and what makes this even more complex is that all stakeholders have themselves stakeholders. What enables performance is beyond the awareness, knowledge, and skills that those who are involved in instructional system design are about. This fishbone diagram is adapted from the Ishikawa diagram from the 1950s in Japan. It takes a look at the process or processes and the human assets that enable that process and the environmental assets that enable that process. The first variable in a process performance orientation is to look at the process and processes themselves. Are they designed to meet the stakeholder requirements? Next we can look at what the environmental assets are and any gaps that prohibit meeting the needs of the process. And the same is true about the human assets, which includes awareness, knowledge, and skills, but goes beyond what instructional systems designers typically tackle. An example of this being applied is in this framework of areas of performance, of which there are seven, and each one of these area of performance for a particular job, the ABC account representative, can be further delineated and define using a performance model format. I've been using a performance model format since 1979. It helps us identify per the chunks or areas of performance of the job, the key outputs and the measures for those outputs. And for each output, what are the associated tasks? Then we can look at those key outputs and their measures to determine are there any typical performance gaps? And if so, what are the probable gap causes? And what type of cause is it? Is it a deficiency of the environmental assets that enable performance? Or is it a deficiency of the individual performers, knowledge and skills, or one of their other individual attributes or values? Outputs and tasks and measures for both, and a cause and gap analysis are what the performance model format brings to one. When we have a collection of these performance models, we can begin to systematically derive all of the enablers. And this is important when we're doing our typical gap analysis or if we're going to do analysis beyond instructional analysis. We need to understand what enables performance and what are the gaps. Performance competence, the ability to perform tasks, to produce outputs to stakeholder requirements 
requires a robust set of tools to conduct both analysis and design. Your ISD analysis needs to help people learn how to perform, how to help themselves better enable their own performance, how to avoid barriers to performance, and what to do if the barriers were unavoidable. I first published on the analysis methodology with my business partners back in 1984. A few months earlier than that, we published in Training Magazine on how to apply that approach to analysis to the design of a curriculum architecture and training and development paths. Both these articles, again, were in 1984. I have many books, four of which are available as free PDFs. The first book, The Quality Roadmap, is not. I also have six books in a six-pack and the seventh book, The Fifth Management Foci, also addressing how to look at performance. Where you might want to start is this free 25-page PDF, which was Chapter 11 in the Human Performance Technology Handbook of 2006. My chapter was Modeling Mastery Performance and Systematically Deriving the Enablers for Performance Improvement. I'm Guy Wallace. And I've been in the ISD and performance improvement business since 1979 and served as a consultant to many Fortune 500 companies since 1982. You can reach me via my email address. Please, focus on the performance requirements and enable them.